is Elmer Washman. I'm a retired U.S. Army Staff Sergeant, a World War II veteran, and this is my story. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. In our armed forces, with the unbounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, the U.S.'s involvement in World War II became official. Eligible men from all across the country were then drafted and sent to war. I got my draft notice on August the 24th, 1943. I chose the Army. I was in basic training till June 1944. My unit was then shipping out as a replacement. We landed on the Omaha Beach on July 14th, 1944. After securing and holding the beach, the 242nd Infantry joined General Patton and the 3rd Army in taking of St. Lowe. After reclaiming the city, Patton moved south toward the city of Argentine, then east, inching closer and closer to the main goal. After arriving, I was picked by General Patton to go to southern France to observe and to radio them and tell them what the conditions were. But as weeks wore on, we were forgotten about. We had no supplies. We ate whatever we could scrounge. My clothing and shoes were so worn that I had to use a rope to hold my pants up. The Army thought we were dead. They sent a letter saying that I was missing in action. As far as they were concerned, we were. I instructed the units to make our way north toward Paris. Weeks later, and by luck, we found the F Company by the time I got back, it was several weeks. When I started down there, I weighed about 225 pounds. By the time I got back, I had lost weight clear down to about 165 pounds. The first thing Patton told me when he saw me, he said, soldier, you're out of uniform. And I said, well, if you can get me some new clothes, I'd sure be glad to have them. So he told us, get this guy some clothes. After Allied forces had secured most of northern France, there was only one thing left to do. Head east towards Berlin, and the Battle of the Bulge began. The, the second mission that uh, General Patton sent me on was the crossing of the Moselle River to set up a line there. We were behind the German lines up in the hills beyond Metz, France. He would send us out 25 miles ahead and observe and keep him posted on what was going on out that way. And if he needed to fire, we gave him the instructions. So we called dir directly to him. General Patton told us that there's four cannons on the other side of the field from where you guys are. We'd like for you to go over there and destroy those four cannons. November 8th, 1944, 4 a.m. It was a full moon that night, but there was a fog covering the valley. It made them invisible to the enemy. They made it all the way across the field, and by sunrise, each of the cannon units were killed. The fog lifted revealing that there was five cannons, not four. Germans started firing at us. They were firing at us with machine guns and that forced us to lie down. And when you're on the ground, they just pick you off. So you're gonna get killed running or, or laying on the field. So at that time, I was concerned about my men and I got up and started running around trying to get them up off the ground, to get them running to try to save them. First round missed, but the second round landed within arm's lengths of Elmer. If the round had been only one foot closer, he would have been incinerated. His left arm was shattered. His jaw was almost blown clean off. He was hit with so much shrap metal that his unit thought he was dead. He quickly lost consciousness. And I saw the, the bright lights, on, and well, I figured, okay, there's the bright lights. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to heaven right now. Then I laid there in that field for hours. I woke up later. Uh, so I got up, and here the bodies all over. started walking back, and I fell. And I, I, I tried to get up, and I managed to get on my feet, and I struggled for a, almost 300 yards, but I made it. At the end of the field, there was a road, 
and across the road there was a barn. I thought to myself, if I could just make it to the barn. I had only walked about 50 feet, and I walked right into a German machine gun nest, and they were pointing towards the barn where I was going. And so I just walked up to them and looked at them, and I was a bloody mess, so they they looked at me and I looked at them and I decided, well, I'm going to walk out in front of the machine gun whether they shoot me in the back or not. I got to go. And I walked right in front of the machine gun and they never fired a shot. And I started walking back towards the road where there was a ditch on each side of the road. As I stepped into the ditch, I slipped and fell. As Staff Sergeant Washman fell for the second time, a shot rung over his head, missing him by inches. He then used the last of his strength and made it to the barn. At this moment, his strength was gone. He fell for the third time. However, this time someone caught him. Army medic Steve Johnson caught Elmer as he fell. I remember only four things after that. The operating room, the train ride to Paris. By late January, I, I was a season. However, his recovery was far from over. Altogether, it took 10 months of recovery. By that time, the war was almost over. For his service, he was awarded a Purple Heart for valor and wounds received in battle, but the biggest reward received was coming home. It's always been in my mind that why I was spared. And uh, over all these years, I've been always thinking about that and thinking about what can I do to help other people.